Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another player profile. I'm going to take a look at Michael Walters today from what is not a bad little office I've got set up today. I'm just chilling, cruising along on my holidays, working my way through Petty Dangerfield Territory, through Moggs Creek onto Eastern View. You might even be able to hear the waves in the background, I'm not too sure, but uh, it's fair to say Shorty's cruising at the moment on the holidays and I wish picking a Supercoach side was as simple as my Tuesday because right now I've just got the oak in one hand few beats on got a bargain down at quicksilver thanks to tizio 100 so i'm flying but look today we're going to take a glance at michael walters and very interesting i must say normally when i set out to do player profiles i already know where my verdict lands before i take a look at them sometimes it changes sometimes it clarifies my original thoughts but this was one where I really felt Walters was one I wouldn't look at this season. You know, a bit too inconsistent, but looking at a few numbers and, and digging a bit deeper, I, I'm quite a fan. I'm not going to absolutely sell him on you today, but I definitely think he's one we've got to consider. Now, look, he's priced at 478 k and, and look, that's because he has really spent a fair bit of time as a forward throughout his career. I mean, a few averages since 2009, 50 65.3, 54, 75.6. 2013 was a breakout. That was when he really started to play some decent footy. Actually got on the park, averaged 88.9. Back to the six games in 2014, 79.2. And then a bit of forward play. You know, he really played or became a really good forward, a small forward, but it didn't really correlate to scores because the forward pocket type of player does struggle to consistently be in the game, but averaged 81.4 and 78.6. But last year, I know the average is only 87, but it's the second half of the year that we've got to look at. And that coincided with a move into the midfield by Ross Lyon, and it really saw him flourish. Now, obviously, the Dockers need a bit more through that midfield. Fife was injured at certain stages as well, and certainly not at his best. So all of a sudden, a bit like James Sicily, we've got a guy who has played in a different position in the second half of the season, played it extremely well, and therefore, he's priced a bit lower, but we've got a reasonable sample size of some great scoring in that new role. Now, of course, through the midfield, you've got Fife, you've got Neil, you've got Blakely. Uh, Mundy will be in there at times, but really, I think it's that new brigade of Fife, Neil, and Walters, and of course, Blakely, which will make an extremely big core group of Frio's midfield. There'll be others flowing through, no doubt about that, but they seem to be the main ones. And look, that last 10 rounds that I discussed from Walters average 108.7. I mean, that's that's massive. The last round he got injured, or his last round of the season against the Hawks, went off early in the last quarter, round 18, and with a PCL injury. So it is worth noting that he does have a few injury issues. There's no doubt he has missed a bit of footy over the journey, but he has played most games over the last three seasons and by all reports has got through this preseason fairly well. So I want to take a look at the positives firstly. He's 27 years old too, so he's certainly well into his prime. I don't know about you, but I just sort of thought, pictured Walters and just kind of thought he was, you know, 24, 25, but he's been around a bit longer than maybe we thought. So those last 10 rounds, the move into the midfield, and he really was able to find plenty of the ball and still hit the scoreboard. Loves to kick, more often than not will have double the amount of kicks as he does handballs. He's certainly a guy who likes to use his boot, which is great, and he can kick goals. Now, I think one of the criticisms maybe of Walters in the past has been a bit soft, maybe contested ball isn't his strength, you know, just a typical sort of creative, quick, fast, talented forward line player. But this move in the midfield has really brought out a few areas of his game that I must say I didn't think he had. But 172 points against the Saints he scored. That was a big, big game. He kicked six and had 32 touches. Now, we're not going to be expecting that every week, but it underlines what he's capable of. On the other side of the coin, he also had a 47 against, I can't remember who it was, but against the Hawks. That's who it was. Against the Hawks, he had the 47 where he went off in the last quarter. Now, I'm not sure whether he carried that injury through any stages of the game. I didn't see the game, but he was probably heading for a lowish score 
anyway, given we were up to the last quarter. May have, hard to predict, but probably would have averaged or, or scored 60-odd or 70-odd around that game. And a low score of 49 against the Crows. But otherwise, pretty good in that second half of the season. I think looking at those two, you know, a low score of 49 and a high of 172. And that has been the criticism of a lot of people and a lot of super coaches. Maybe he's still inconsistent. You're going to ride a bit of a roller, roller coaster. You know, is he going to be able to produce solid week in, week out numbers? So that is food for thought. But when you look at his season, that back end of the season, it was fairly consistent. I think there were some big scores. There were the odd 70 and, of course, that 49. But, but largely, it was between 85 and 110. In fact, I didn't write it down, but I'll just see if I can get it up on my phone right now and, and just see exactly roll through some of those scores because I would be interested to see exactly. Let's have a look. Here we are. So, yeah, from round 7 onwards, basically. So, round 7 to 18 is the area we're looking at. 119, 137, 135, that 49 in round 10. 81, 95, 105, 172, 106, 88, then the 47 where he got injured. And I think the Hawks dealt him a bit of a lesson on that day too. So I think there's a bit of a perception that Walters is inconsistent. But if you want to take that 49 out, even include it, but take that last game where he's injured out, because he may well have finished the game and had a 25-point last quarter. You never know. He might have ended up with 75. But... Aside from that 49, he's between 80 and 110 a lot of the time, including 119, 137, 135, that 172. So he really didn't go below that 80 mark very often. Just the one occasion, if you want to include that last game where he had an injury, then it's two occasions. But I think that's fairly decent. I think most players, particularly guys who are changing position and making a move to a new role in a poor side, I think there's always a chance that they're going to have the odd poor score. And I, that's where it pricked my ears up. I saw that, and, and like many of you possibly, I thought, nah, Walters is a bit hot and cold. You know, he's a bit hot and cold. Then I looked at those numbers and I thought, oh, gee, when you look at that, round 7 to eight, 18, he wasn't really that hot and cold. Had one cold game. The rest he was either warm or red hot. Now, I, I don't mind that. At 478k, I think it's worth considering because at the moment, there's not a lot of options in the forward line that we are saying, yep, there's my half a million dollars bank on that bloke. You know, look at Menangoli. You've heard my thoughts on him. Uh, even Heaney, people are getting concerned about being fully fit with, given the way he played the other practice match. But look, I think he's definitely one to consider. Hopefully he'll play this weekend. I'm sure he will. But he was in the initial JLT1 game, 77% time on ground, 15 touches, 12 contested and 7 tackles. So, you know, that sort of says exactly what I was saying. He's no outside player. So I think given those numbers, he also had the three clearances, was named Frio's sixth best player. So he's in 11% of teams at the moment, which, you know, is probably a reasonable reflection. You know, that's sort of being somewhat common without being too popular. Probably once you get beyond 15% of teams, you, you definitely see a lot of guys in the 15% uh, and plus teams, which you really classify as popular. But Walters has, has got to be a guy we consider. I've reeled off a few positives there. Negatives, of course, that body, I would say. Um, he has been frequently missing matches throughout his career. But in the last three years or so, he's been fairly consistent. So I think and I feel like I can put that one to bed. Otherwise, you know, there's that unknown factor, I guess. He's only really played 10 or so matches through the midfield. You know, he probably dashed through there at times prior to last year. But realistically, he hasn't played too many matches in there. So that's something we've got to consider. Will he cop more attention? You know, will someone like opposition clubs go look at Walters and say, well, look, maybe we can stop him because, gee whiz, we can't stop Fife. Neil is just in and under. He's a bull. Walters is their third best player. I don't think we can really stop those two. Let's tag Walters. Is that something that could happen? 
it's guesswork really. I'm not too sure. We don't see the tag as often these days anyway. And I think lastly, in terms of concern, you know, there is that possibility that last year isn't enough for us to bank on. You know, it's probably 10, 11 matches and maybe it's not enough for you to think this guy's a premium. Maybe that was just a slight flash in the pan. He's just going to sort of go back to those mid 80s or high 80s numbers. And at that price, we really need him to be in the 90s. You know, if we're selecting him, we need him to be 95 plus. So there are a few things to think about. It's fair to say his upside is enormous. I think he's in the prime of his career. The Dockers need midfielders. He brings that class. I think while Fife and Neil are unbelievable players, and I probably shouldn't even put those sort of guys in this category, but they probably don't have that breakaway sort of attributes to their game. They're more your powerful, explosive, dynamic in and under guys, where someone like a Walters and the Hill brothers, they give that breakaway speed, that craft around a stoppage. And I must say, I haven't, you know, I don't see the Dockers play super regularly, but I would have to say skill level wise, Walters would be right up there in terms of the best ball users at the club. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he's the sort of guy that would complement a Fife and a Neil very well. So that's something that I think is also, also worth considering. So let me know your thoughts on that one because I must say I, I entered my little research on him and I thought, you know, he's been requested a few times, but he, he's not someone I've even really considered, to be honest. All of a sudden... I'm strongly considering him. I don't know where he would fit into my side, but he's definitely come into the calculations of, well, if this happens or that happens, he's a guy that could quite comfortably sit in my side and I'd be content with. So very interesting when that happens. I sort of surprised myself, but look, anyway, I'll leave you to it. I'll leave you to ponder that one and a few of those numbers. So let me know if you've got Walters in your side at the moment and if you're considering him also, but by all means, request a few more players that I might be able to have a look at. I've probably nearly covered off on all the ones I would like. There's probably still a few and, and a few that I probably won't get to, but I reckon I've covered off reasonably well on some of the more topical ones. And we definitely will look closer at the structure and even more so into the structure, but actually, you know, who should we be looking at for F2 and that sort of thing. I think that's probably the next stage and, and something I might look to do in the week leading up. And, and I'll also have, as I did last year, Shorty's must-haves and Shorty's traps for Supercoach 2018. So that'll be something to look forward to as well. But thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll be back soon with another player profile. Cheers.